Hi everyone, as I just said, my name is Mario. Um, I'm the tech evangelist at Amazon, and I'm part of the devices and app store team. And I'm very excited to be here and talk to you guys about TV. TV is one of my big focus in the last few years, and, and I'm an Android developer myself, so before let's jump in and, and talk about um, TV, let me say a couple words about me. So I've been developing Android, I would say, since the early days of Android. Um, I had my, my very slow um, device, and I was starting to create apps that look absolutely horrible, but after the years I learned how to build better and better apps and ended up creating quite a few apps. Uh, and a discreet success with my apps, and, and also been working in collaboration with Google as a GDE for about three years, right after um, I joined Amazon, and um, before that, I also been co-founding startups. I would be uh, in a co-working as being a freelancer, so uh, the whole shebang of the classic Android developer, I would say. And and now I do this. I engage with the community of developers and make sure that you guys are fully up to speed uh, on Amazon, our devices, and today Fire TV. But here we are at DroidCon. We we like we're here because we love Android, right? And, and Android has evolved during the years, as I said before. It started as a as it was for, for mobile devices, just, just for phone and handhelds. Um, it was thought to be very compact, small footprint, battery efficient, and, and most of all, to be open, uh, to allow pretty much any Java developer to create apps. And that's... Uh, Things started to evolve as, as Android was becoming a more and more successful platform. In 2012, pretty much, uh, Android scaled up and, and went on tablets. And all of a sudden, us as developers, we could create new UIs, new interesting user experiences as well, um, taking um, 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 the whole screen and using the whole real estate that was given us by these tablets. And, and now there is a new... Um, revolution, I would say, in, uh, in devices. And Android, again, is scaling up again. And the interesting bit is that now Android is scaling to, to what we could say is maybe the less mobile device ever, which is the TV. Uh, which is, for us, as Android developers, is a great thing because we can leverage all of our experience as, as Android developers and all our experience with Android developer tools to create new experiences for the big screen. And the TV is becoming more and more pervasive. Of course, uh, as you will see in a bit, uh, what is the most successful thing on TV, of course, is content, is consuming content. Um, but now TV is going beyond that. You can create full-fledged apps for TV. Uh, on Fire TV now, we ship it with Alexa on it, so you can even talk to your TV and give it commands and create new experiences. Um, and today, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm from Amazon, so I'm here to talk to you about Fire TV. A lot of developers say, oh, okay, but wait a minute, you're here, you're talking about Android, but it's Fire OS is what is powering um, Fire devices. So why are you here? Well, the thing is that actually Fire OS is, is based on Android. We can, we can say it's actually Android. Um, it's based on API 22, which is not too bad, if you ask me, as a developer. Pretty much all the building blocks are there. Um, and of course, Fire TV are based on Fire OS, so run on uh, Fire TV and Fire TV Stick, which are both powered by Fire OS. And the interesting bit is, of course, there is also Android TV. Android TV is built on Android, is actually Android. So when you look at this slide, you notice that there is a direct kinship between developing for uh, Fire OS and in general developing for Android and Android TV. Uh, when I talk to developers, I always mention that you guys should focus on being cross-platform. You shouldn't restrict to a single platform, that you should always think big. And, and at Amazon, we, we think exactly this way. We want to enable you guys to go on as many platforms as you can. So what you will see today is not just how to create things for Fire TV, but how you can build things that work cross-platform as well. So when I was saying that, that Fire OS is based on, on Android, um, I want to stress that for us, again, it's very important to make you guys uh, able to create apps easily, which means that we don't want you to use tools you're not accustomed to. So the great news is when you want to create a native app for Fire TV, you just use the tool that you 
already know, like Android Studio. And another question that I get all the time is, yeah, of course, there is Chromecast, there is Apple TV, and all the others. How is Fire TV doing? Um, well, Fire TV is doing amazingly well. Uh, Fire TV is now the best-selling uh, streaming media player in the US, UK, and Germany. And it's also available in Japan, and we also just launched in India, which is having a great success as well. And what are users doing with Fire TV? They're, of course, consuming content. There is no surprise that these users want to use a TV as a TV. So what do you do on a TV? You usually watch videos or play games. And that's exactly what people do on Fire TV. Millions of videos are consumed every day across Fire TVs, and in particular on media streaming applications. So today, that's exactly where we're going to focus on. We will see how we can easily build media streaming applications in a few minutes. So before we jump in on, on coding and see how we can deploy our apps, let's talk about the um, device itself, about the hardware and the Fire TV family. So there are two devices um, in the Fire TV family. There is the Fire TV box and the Fire TV stick. Um, even though I said that uh, they're based on Fire OS, um, so the great thing is that these devices share the same code base. When you deploy on one of these devices, the app will very likely work on the other. Maybe if it's a high-spec game, you need to check um, if, uh, if the performance is the same. But what actually happens under the hood is that the Fire TV box is more powerful. The Fire TV box is one of the few uh, top boxes that can stream 4K content, for example. It's 2 gig of RAM, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, um, internal uh, storage, which is expandable. Uh, the Fire TV stick on the other side um, is slightly less powerful, but has one great advantage, which is extremely affordable. Um, you know that there is a thing called Prime Day, uh, and when we do Prime Day, we heavily discount these devices, and we were um, able even to sell a Fire TV stick for $29. So 20, I, come, I come from London, uh, $29 is the price of two cocktails in London, pretty much. Um, so, so for the price of two cocktails, you have a full-fledged Android device that you can connect to your TV and build apps for it and release it to millions of users in Germany, in the US, UK, and many other countries. And we always want to improve the experience. Um, um, when we release the new user interface, um, all the media went crazy because they loved it. Um, we really want to create a user experience which is easy to use, but also uh, that it looks good on the eyes. Um, so, a few, uh, few months ago, we introduced the new cinematic UI, uh, which is available now on all Fire TV devices, uh, including Fire TV Stick. Um, and we have completely redesigned the UI, and you, you see on top where the Grand Tour is, that is a billboard, which is actually a constantly playing video that you developers can leverage. You can work with us and provide us the assets and these videos, and you can get in front of millions of users when they turn on their TV. And there, there are thousands of, of apps. Uh, there is, uh, of course, the big players like Netflix or the BBC um, or, you know, uh, Sky. And we have uh, uh, all the others even in the US and, and in India. But I would say if you think about what's the situation between tablets and phones and, um, and TV, I would say that the competition is not there yet. Uh, I'm thinking about the number of apps that we have on Amazon, and we have more than 800,000 apps on the store. The vast majority is for tablets and phones. When it comes to TV, there are thousands of apps. So think about that. Think about the opportunity that you guys have. You can really stand out in a new emerging environment. So if you are a developer like me, the first thing that you want to do when you get an Android device is to turn on ADB. Right? You just want to plug it in and deploy your apps. So let's see how you do it on, on Fire TV. So um, there are basically two ways to connect to a Fire TV. The first one is the classic. You plug it in with your cable and turn on uh, developer options, and you deploy your app. In order to do this, unless you have a very long cable, 
uh, you will be very close to the device itself, and you'll probably be very close to the screen, which for me is not the best experience possible, right? When you're developing an app for someone that will use um, your application from the 10-foot experience. So, in my opinion, the best way to connect to a Fire TV device is over Wi-Fi. Because you can, let's say you're uh, developing in your office and you put your device a few meters away from you. Um, or if you're working from home, you can put it in your living room and experience your app as your users will be. Um, so how you do this? First thing, you go to developer option, and when you turn on ADB debugging, the, all the devices in Fire TV and Fire TV Sticks will be enabled um, for Wi-Fi connection. So then you go to network and copy the IP address. And then what do you do? You go on your terminal, and you run the three magic words, ADB connect, and copy the IP address of your device, click Enter. At that point, you are connected to the Fire TV, and you can deploy your APKs over the air, uh, which is great. With the click of a button, you can immediately ex start experiencing your apps as your users will be. So when we first uh, released the Fire TV in 2014, um, we actually thought it was a good idea to ship it with an SDK. And we said, you know, you have this SDK, contains everything you need to build an app just for Fire TV, um, and that's it. And then we listened to the feedback from you guys. And the developers were saying, you know what, I don't want an SDK that is so restrictive. Something I can only use on Fire TV. What about the other platforms? And also, you know, is also I don't want to add more libraries, who cares? So we thought, you know what, actually it's not, it's not a very good idea. Um, so we deprecated the SDK. Don't worry, no SDK. Um, and um, with the release of Fire OS 5, we introduced full support for uh, the Limbeck library that um, some of you might know uh, is a standard support library from, um, from Android. It's provided by Google. And what is the bottom line here? Is that if you use um, the Limbeck library, your apps are already compatible with Fire TV. You deploy you create once and deploy to multiple platforms. So basically, when you create, we use, uh, you fire up Android Studio, uh, create a template of uh, an Android TV application, and click Play, and you're connected on to a Fire TV, this is what will happen, pretty much. Uh, this is an application that is running on a Fire TV, and is the basic, the basic Android TV application. And everything works. All the animation works, um, all the player works, uh, all the features for in-app purchase works as well. Which is awesome, right? It's great. Like, I build once and deploy to multiple platforms. If you're interested in using Leanback, uh, we have full documentation on that. I, uh, I wrote myself a guide on how to use Leanback um, on, on Fire TV. But then we were listening again to the feedback from you guys. And you were saying, like, Leanback is, is a great basic template. But actually, when you want to build a real-life application, let's say, for example, connected to an actual service where you have stored your videos, and you want to do buffering, and you want to do uh, multi-bit rating, for example, if you want to add more codecs, if you want to add a custom player, if you want to add, add ads or social media, that is non-trivial on Limbeck. That is something that you have to do from scratch and takes time. At Amazon, we want you to be able to create apps not in weeks, not in days, but in minutes. Um, and that's why we created new templates, actually, that you can use, new frameworks. And the most important are the Fire App Builder and the uh, Web App Starter Kit, or WASC. So, um, what is the difference between these two? First of all, the Fire App Builder is a full fledged native uh, Android template. It's a Java template. Or for the people that likes it, you can migrate to Kotlin. It's fine. still works. Um, and uh, the Web App Starter Kit, as the word itself says, is a web-based template. It's based on HTML5 and JavaScript. Um, these two templates, even though they're completely different technologies, they share the same concept that if you have your own service, your videos stored somewhere, and you want to build an application that streams this content, being video or audio, you should be able to do it right away. 
More than this, you should be able to do this without writing a single line of code. So basically, both the Fire Builder and Web App Starter Kit are a way to connect your service to a front-end application. And they are optimized for the big screen and provide a series of modules that you can use to fire your application in an instant. So let's drill into the Fire App Builder, which for us as Android developers is probably the most interesting. So the Fire App Builder, as I said, is an easy, fast, and beautiful uh, plug and play template uh, for audio and video apps. This is the officially approved slide that says, create an app in less than an hour. I can tell you from workshops that I've done with partners that I've seen developers build a full-fledged working application in 15 minutes. So the, the keywords here are plug and play. So the idea is that you have the core application, and then you have modules that you activate or deactivate based on what you need. Um, and how does it work? So you have a feed that could be a JSON feed or a media RSS feed that contains the metadata of your, um, of your um, service, basically, of all your content. And uh, the template itself will plug into this feed and populate the interface. So when you load up the Fire App Builder for the first time, you'll find uh, this interface. So everything you see on screen here is dynamically generated. It's plugged into a service, and it's taking all the videos, all the images, all the animations is, are generated uh, via, the, um, via the API that connects your JSON file to uh, the template itself. And it's full featured. Yes, um, you can swap components. Uh, some people use the default uh, video player in Android. Some others use Exo player. You can swap them. Uh, you want to add ads? You can do that. Uh, you want to add in app purchasing? We have a module for that. Uh, you want to add advertisement? There is a module for that. Analytics? Do you use Crashlytics? Do you use Google Analytics? Uh, do you use uh, Flurry? Do you use we have, we, we got you covered. Um, and it's very, very easy to use. There are basically four main steps. The first one is to configure your feed. Basi you, you can, uh, most uh, services provide this. It's basically, is a API to exp expose your metadata, right? Um, you write, uh, you, you need to provide us a JSON feed or a media RSS feed, which is basic, basically XML that contains all the information about your videos. Um, then you set up what we call a recipe. So as you will see in a minute, the recipe is a way to connect a specific piece of content to the content that the Fire TV, um, the Fire App Builder template is capable of understanding and display. Uh, and then you customize the UI. You can customize the look and feel very, very easily. Uh, and add the modular components. Let's say you want to add Facebook login, or you want to add uh, advertisement, or you want to add um, login with Amazon. You can do that in a bit. And then you launch the app, and everything works. So I know that it might sound crazy, so I want to demonstrate how easy it is. So um, let's say that your feed looks like this. So you have an ID uh, for, your, uh, for your video. Let's say that you have a title, a description, the duration of the video, a link to the thumbnail uh, of the video, uh, a bigger image that you might want to use to display um, the poster of the video, and um, the URL, of course, of the content that you want to display, and then a few categories that you want to, your video to appear into, right? So the, the thing that you have to do is to write down the recipe. There is a file inside uh, the template, which is called uh, recipe.json. And in this JSON, uh, the most important field is the match list. Basically, the match list uh, is used to combine the metadata of the Fire App Builder to the metadata of your content. So let's say, for example, that we said that you have your title of the video is called title. You have ID and description, which is called description. And then the URL of your video in your metadata is called video URL. Because that's the specific that you have. We don't care about 
what your name, uh, what name have you done, have you added to the your metadata? The important bit is that you map it to the right metadata to the fire in the fire app builder. So in this case, you do video URL, which is your URL, at URL, which is the uh, metadata that the fire app builder can use. Basically, adding connecting your metadata and the Fire App Builder metadata, the template knows where to find the content and automatically populates the interface. And then, of course, you might want to add components. For example, let's say uh, that you uh, want to add the um, Amazon lo uh, the login with Amazon component to allow the person to log in inside the app instead of using Facebook. Uh, into uh, a file, which is called settings.gradle, that you know very well, uh, you will find um, a tag which is called implementation. And in here, you see one component which is called Facebook auth component. You want to swap it with uh, the Amazon login component. You just change the definition here to login with Amazon component. The same thing you have to do in Gradle. So Facebook auth component goes away and you put login with Amazon component, and that's it. The only thing that you have to add is uh, where you want to show the login. Let's say that we want to, want to check if the user has logged in before we play a specific video. So let's say that, for example, we want to make sure that we capture the data um, not when the people, the, the, the user is uh, browsing the content, but only when they're playing the content. We just uh, we went to navigation.json, which is another file in the template, and in the activity playback activity, which is where we play the content, we just add verify screen access true. And if we have a login component, in this case we have login with Amazon component, that will automatically display this page, uh, which is the login with Amazon page. And when the user clicks, it will be prompted to provide the email address um, and name that is already logged in in their uh, Amazon Fire TV. And as you notice, there is, I haven't written a single line of Java. I added the tags. I swap the component and um, and decided that I want a login component. And that's it. You want to customize the UI? This is just a, a single example. So I'm sure that you, uh, if you've been uh, working with Android uh, a few years ago, you remember how painful it was to deal with fonts. Like fonts are super painful. Um, and they're still painful if you use the basic framework. Um, so we didn't want you to feel this pain. So I said, you know what? Let's just add calligraphy inside the template. Calligraphy, for the one that don't use it, is a very powerful uh, font management library. Uh, and for peace of mind, we also included 4D custom fonts that you can use. And you can add your own fonts. You just add them to the asset folder. And then you can change the name here. Let's say instead of Robotolite, you want Trebuchet or something else, or Comic Sans, I dare you not, um, you can do it. Just changing a string. You want to change the UI? This is the classic, I would say, um, I don't want to say Netflix style, but I just said it. Um, this is the most common UI when you're browsing content. Um, you don't like this. You want a more Limbeck style uh, interface. You just change, sorry, uh, this activity is called Content Browse Activity. You just change the name of the activity to Full Content Browse Activity, and your content will be completely rearranged in a grid mode with all the categories which, you, which are, by the way, already populated by the tags that you have provided. So I hope that I gave you a glimpse of what you can do with Fab and how powerful it is and how easy it is to do. Um, I want to stress that this is an open source project, so you can contribute to it. Uh, you can um, clone it from GitHub. Uh, if you have pull requests, please do. Um, and there is a full documentation on Fire App Builder. And the code itself, under the hood, is wrapped in Rx Java, that I'm sure you guys know very well. So you can tamper with the code. You, you can do whatever you want with it. 
For the web developers in the room, I want to also give you a glimpse of um, the web app starter kit, or WASC, as I call it. So WASC is basically the same thing as the fab, uh, but for web. So it's a web-based uh, web template to create media streaming applications, optimized for the big screen. And a great feature of WASC is it doesn't only take JSON and uh, uh, media RSS, but also can use YouTube as a source of, of content. So um, let's see how can you build a WASC application. So even more, even better than Fab, actually you can build a WASC application um, changing two lines of code, which is not even code, are actually two metadata. You just need uh, into the init.javascript file, you just need to add the uh, username of the uh, YouTube channel that you want to create the app of. And then you add your YouTube um, API developer key. And that's it. The app is already working. It's a full-fledged TV-enabled web app that fetches all the content from YouTube. And it will look like this. I just added the um, um, ID of our Amazon App Store developer channel uh, on YouTube. Um, and he generated the app, and he's live. And you can, of course, customize the, um, the interface using CSS uh, or customize it in any other way you want. And how do you test a web application on a Fire TV? Because I just said, with the native, you just connect via ADB. So how do you do it for a web application? So um, we want to solve this problem as well. So in, uh, on the Amazon App Store, on Fire TV, you can install uh, an app which is called uh, the Web App Tester, which is basically uh, a tester for web application, as the, as, the, as the word says. You just need to provide the URL of the index.html uh, file of your application that you might have uploaded on a repo, let's say, for example, on AWS S3. Um, and uh, you click Add Device and then Test, and the application will show up on your Fire TV. And it's already configured with all the remote controls, support, and all the, it uses the native player of the Fire TV. Um, so it's done. Basically, it already works. Uh, if you don't want to publish it on a, um, on a repository, you can even uh, zip the folder of the web app and uh, put it into the, um, into the local memory of the Fire TV, and the web app tester will pick it up, and you can test it as well. Uh, so that's it for WASC. Uh, there's actually much more. There is full documentation, a video that you can watch about how to create a WASC application. Um, so here's the link. Uh, don't worry, I will share these slides afterwards. And then um, I want to give you the glimpse of another uh, great feature, if you ask me, um, which is Amazon Fling. So a lot of developers come to me and they say, you know, Mario, um, I would like to share my content on, on the TV, but I don't want to build a TV application. Um, I just want to use my phone or my tablets and share content, share video, for example, on the screen. Um, so how do you do that? You, you, you do it uh, via Amazon Fling. So I'm sure that you guys are, full, are confident with the concept of casting, right? Uh, Fling is basically the same thing. Um, as one great advantage for Android developers like us, that is a full-fledged native um, SDK. It means that you don't need to build a uh, web app as a receiver. You can build a native Android application on the other side. Even more, maybe you don't even have to write anything. You just need to add something to your mobile application. How does it work? Uh, you add the Fling component to your, um, uh, to your mobile application on phone and tablet. And then on the other side, you have the Fire TV. All Fire TVs, including the Fire TV stick, come with an embedded Fling receiver. It's basically is a basic application that is capable of playing uh, audio, video, and image content. So how does it work? Basically, you just have to share metadata between uh, the Fling component and the embedded Fling receiver. And the content will be automatically played uh, on the TV. Uh, 
Uh, the alternative is if you have a Fire TV application as well, you can also build a custom Fling receiver and, um, and then have your app on TV react uh, to Fling commands. And the great thing of Fling is also is uh, very agnostic as a platform, so you can also add custom commands to control the application. Uh, how easy it is to um, play content using Fling. So the first thing that you have to do is to write down um, a um, JSON that contains all the metadata that you want to share. So in this case, for example, uh, the type of content, title, description. You can even add link to the subtitles if you want to add subtitles. Uh, if you, you can add no replay if you want your content just to stop playing when it's finished or if you want to automatically play again. And then, of course, you need to have the URL of the video or of the image or of the audio that you want to play. Um, and then, in your uh, mobile application, you have to add a new discovery controller. Uh, discovery controller is basically um, a, uh, an object that searches for uh, fling receivers. Um, and then um, you have to start it adding amazon.thin.pl, which is the unique identifier of the embedded receiver on the Fire TV. Uh, if you were to build your own custom impl implementation of Fling, here you will add my Fling or whatever you want to call your custom implementation. And then with a single line of code, uh, once you receive the callback player discovered, which is basically when the system finds that there is a Fire TV somewhere that can receive the content, you just um, use remote media player set media source, which is remote media player is just is the Fire TV itself. Set media source means start playing from this uh, particular source, and you pass the URL of the video and the metadata uh, JSON that you've created. This is a string. And then you can also add, uh, if you want to play automatically uh, or if you want to play in background, which is a feature which is mostly used by um, custom implementations. And that's it. That's it. So with this, uh, you can create applications for um, Fire TV using native, using uh, the Fire App Builder. If you're a web developer, you can use Wask and easily create apps from um, YouTube, um, JSON feeds, or uh, XML feeds. Or if you don't want to build a Fire TV application, you can use Fling and uh, send your content from pretty much any Android device and even iOS uh, to the big screen without implementing anything on the receiver side. So, ooh. Okay, interesting. So this is for the survey, which is happening in a bit. Um, before I, I leave you to the Q&A, um, I want to say that uh, if you want to know more about what we're working on, uh, we're holding a big uh, developer summit in London on November the 7th. We're expecting hundreds of developers like you guys um, in London. It's a free event. It's just first come, first served. So we just announced it. Reserve your ticket. If you don't want to travel to London, don't worry, because we run monthly meetups even here in Germany. And we have events in Berlin and Munich as well. So you might be able to find me and other um, Amazon evangelists and, and engineers um, in Berlin and Munich. And we aim to be uh, in much more uh, cities. Uh, in Germany as well. So here's the link. Uh, the next event uh, for this month uh, will happen in Munich. But next month we'll have events both in Munich and Berlin. And with this is, I've, I've finished. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, now, during the Q&A, if we have five minutes, uh, if you scan this QR code, you can fill out a very quick form, in, and you can tell me if you like this presentation or not. And the end of the Q&A, I will pick a winner using the magic of random.org, and, um, and the winner will win a Fire TV. So now I'm open to all the questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any question? Hi. Um, quick question. Maybe I missed that part, but um, when you use this Fire uh, TV app builder, so build like the, the native app much quicker. Can it, does it still run on Android TV or yes. is it then specific to Fire? Yes, uh, it runs on Android TV. Um, 
given the Android TV is Marshmallow or Up. Uh, but now all Android TVs should be Marshmallow or Up. So yeah, it does. Um, when I use the, um, the SDK for showing content on the TV, um, the Fling SDK, um, can I trigger some kind of notification? Hey, I've got a custom app. Will you uh, do you want to install this app on the TV? Right. Um, so, no. Uh, but in order to do that, there is actually another service that you can use, which is called Dial. Uh, it's actually a protocol which has been developed by Netflix. Um, and he's fully supported on Fire TV. Uh, you actually find the documentation on developer.amazon.org, uh, um, So basically, uh, what it does is, let's say that you have a, a mobile application, uh, and you, you embed the uh, dial SDK. You can say, uh, send this to my TV. Mm -hmm. The application will connect to the cloud using dial to the Fire TV of the user. If the uh, application is not installed, uh, it will prompt the user to download the app. If the application is installed, it will fire up the application. Okay. Cool. Any other question? I know that you want the Fire TV, so. <laughs> sure. Uh, hi, thank you for the presentation. No problem. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, you were mentioning calligraphy before, and I was just wondering if you, in the future, uh, remove that and replace it with a new uh, custom fund API from the Android uh, SDK. Uh, that's a good question. To be honest with you, I don't know. Um, that's a good feedback. Um, I can follow up. No idea. Danny boy. In the beginning, you mentioned that FireOS is built on API level 21. 22. Still, and uh, any plan of upgrading this at some point? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my final answer. <laughs> cool. OK, great. Let's do this. Um, I'll give you 10 seconds. So if you want to take a picture of this, I'm actually going on three, two, one. That was probably not 10 seconds, but <laughs> let's see. So I will unplug for a second. Ah, oops, so I need to log in. Okay, let's see who's winning a Fire TV. By the way, I hope that you guys have added your contact details at the Amazon booth because we're giving out other, how many Fire TVs? Other three Fire TV sticks at our booth at 4.30. So come and give our contact details. Nice, 39 responses. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Who's going to win? So... So through the magic of random.org, the first winner is number 29, which is Timo Drick at appsonair.de. There you go. Woo, congrats. Put it to good use, congrats. Thank you for coming. So again, guys, come to our booth. Much more Fire TV is coming. If you want to show us your uh, application as well, I don't care if it's for TV or not, uh, more than happy to see all of your apps. And again, let's see each other again at our events. Thanks for coming. Cheers.